Hey everyone, Austin here again with another Let's Play video. And today, as you can see, it's going to be Jackal for the NES, a top-down shooter slash run-and-gun hybrid uh, in a port of the arcade game by the same name. Uh, it's a very, very good game, actually. I didn't get a chance to play it much as a kid, uh, but visiting it as an adult, it's actually turned into one of my favorite uh, sort of casual pick-up-and-play NES games where, like, I don't have to think too much as I'm playing. It's not that long. It only takes about 20 minutes to go through. And uh, I don't really have that much trouble with it from a difficulty standpoint until I get to maybe the final stage or the final boss or something like that. Um, so yeah, this should be a pretty smooth run overall. Uh, if you haven't played this game before, stick around, check it out. I think you'll enjoy uh, what you see here. And uh, if you still play NES games or if you do emulation or something like that, I definitely recommend firing it up, giving it a go because it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can also play two players at the same time if, uh, if you've got a friend or if you like that sort of thing. Uh, it's one of those NES games that allows you to do that, much like Contra. So it's, uh, it's a great game for multiple reasons. Uh, it's also a typical Konami. You you know, it looks pretty good, it sounds pretty good, and it controls pretty well, and uh, it's just uh, all around a good time. So, what I'm going to do is go through the whole game. Uh, there is actually a second loop you can play. I don't intend on doing the second loop in this playthrough. It's a little more difficult, but really not significantly much so. Uh, so there's not really any point in uh, showing that off to you guys. But uh, you can keep looping this game if you're that kind of person and, and you like to do that. Uh, other ga other games on the NES that do that are Contra, Castlevania, Life Force, uh, Gradius, things like that. So uh, a lot of Konami games actually do that, come to think of it. So, But yeah, we're going to go ahead and go through the game. I'll talk about my strategies and how to play the game and, uh, you know, how the game operates and things like that. And things to watch out for. And I'll just do the general reminiscing as well for the most part. So... Uh, but yeah, stick around, kick back, relax, and hopefully you enjoy this video. But um, before we hit that start button, as always, I'd like to give a big shout out to my current Patreon backers. So those nice folks are going to flash by the screen. Thank you guys for your continued patronage. Likewise, with the recent live stream Super Chatters, I do live streams every Thursday night here on YouTube. So if you're around Thursdays, feel free to uh, pop in and say hello. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit start and uh, just jump into the game. So, one thing that's cool about Jackal is that, you know, it is an arcade port, um, and much like Contra on NES, which was also an arcade port, um, the NES version of the game was extended a little bit. So, in the arcade version, you have levels that basically connect seamlessly. The levels themselves are shorter, and they connect into one another very, very seamlessly. Uh, you can't really tell that you're in a new level because it doesn't stop, it just keeps going. Um, and Jackal and the NES, there is actually a clear divide between levels, and they, the sections themselves of each level are stretched out a little bit. So it actually takes a little more time, much like Contra on NES, to get through the uh, NES version of Jackal than uh, the, the arcade game. So that's kind of nice. It's still very faithful to the arcade game, um, but it is also uh, a little bit extended, which is pretty cool. So one of the main gimmicks in Jackal is being able to use your uh, grenades or missiles uh, by pressing the A button to blow up houses and buildings and things like that uh, to release uh, POWs or hostages or whatever you want to call them. Uh, so you don't really get much uh, just by picking them up immediately. Um, well, that's not entirely true. There are blinking hostages you can pick up, and they actually upgrade your missiles or your grenades. So you start off with a grenade, um, and then you pick up one hostage, and it turns it into a missile. And then you pick up another blinking hostage, it turns it into a, uh, a missile that spreads out to the left and right. And then we can pick up one more that will uh, spread out our missile in four directions. And so there's a blinking hostage right there. And now we've got the best, uh, basically the best weapon in the game. Uh, you'll notice that it's basically splash damage going in four directions. You can use that splash damage to kill enemies uh, from a distance. So I'm going to sit here, and the splash damage is going to take care of that turret and that little soldier right there. Uh, pressing the B button uses a machine gun. Uh, and it's actually quite useful as well, because you can keep firing in one direction and sort of strafe left and right. It's actually kind of nice. Now, the machine gun does not fire in other directions. It only fires straight up. And that's one thing that makes Jackal really unique. Um, gives it a very unique um, flavor, I should say, um, because in most shooters that you play where you can move in eight directions, you can shoot in all eight directions. And in this game, you can shoot in all eight directions with one weapon. Uh, you can't shoot in all eight directions with your machine gun, and it definitely gives it a, um, 
again, a very interesting flavor. It's uh, it's very, very interesting, very fun, very unique. And uh, once you get the hang of it, it uh, feels like second nature. So this is where we drop off our POWs. Uh, one interesting change from the arcade game is that you can pick up as many POWs as you want in this game. For, assume you're, for some reason, your Jeep can handle uh, an infinite amount of humans within it. Uh, the arcade version, you can actually only carry a, a very limited amount, so you'll bust open some barracks and you will, uh, you know, you'll rescue some POWs, but then it'll say, oh wait, no, your jeep is full, you can't, you can't carry anymore. And so you'll have to selectively pick up POWs in the arcade version, which is kind of interesting. Um, that doesn't exist, that mechanic doesn't exist in this version of the game, so you don't ever have to worry about that. Um, I do recommend trying to pick up POWs if you have a hard time with this game. Um, really, it's mainly about score, but the thing is you get extra lives from points in this game. So, whenever you drop off POWs, uh, you get points, and then you get extra points for all the POWs you dropped off again, uh, when you, uh, when you beat a level, like so. Uh, so if you're struggling with this game, pick up as many POWs as, as you can, and, uh, you know, reap the rewards, reap those extra lives you know, from those points. The POWs are some of the biggest points you can get in the game, uh, from what I understand. So, if you're trying to get lots of extra lives, you're trying to make your life easier, uh, then definitely, definitely get those guys, definitely drop them off. Along with killing everything that moves, because killing everything that moves gives you points as well. So, a lot of times when I play Jackal, um, I'm very comfortable with this game for the most part. I mean, I'm by no means like a perfectionist at the game. I don't usually get through the game without dying or anything like that. I usually will die a couple times because it's it's actually very easy to end up running into bullets, you know, carelessly. But um, I usually don't have much trouble. I might die a couple times, but I'll always get through the game uh, on a one credit clear or as a one credit clear. Uh, so basically, one credit clear is not continuing. So beating a whole game without continuing. And, uh, I usually don't ever have problems doing that, even if I'm very rusty at the game. Um, but some people really have trouble, uh, with, with Jackal. And, uh, so, yeah, definitely getting POWs, definitely, definitely getting those points will help you out a lot. So, but because I don't have much trouble with it, I'll just, I'll just skip through the game. I won't even bother with the POWs. You know, I'll, I'll bother with the, these guys, the blinking ones, because they give me my, my upgrades. And as long as I'm upgraded, um, I don't really care about, you know, collecting the POWs. But for this playthrough, I'm going to be trying to collect as many as I can, just to sort of show you what uh, sort of a normal playthrough might be like for, for the average individual. Uh, and it is fun collecting them too, but uh, if you're just trying to play through the game quickly, you don't have to pick them up. There is no mandatory requirement or anything like that. So, now one thing you have to watch out for in this level is some of these pillars will actually start falling down. And if you run into them, you will die. So there's one right there. You can shoot them with your machine gun, or you can shoot them with your missile. And uh, you have to watch out for these other jeeps as well, the enemy jeeps. And the enemy jeeps have a tendency of being really fast. And uh, we also have to watch out for these Medusa head statues because they actually shoot homing missiles. Now the homing missiles can be shot. So what I like to do is generally shoot the homing missiles with my, my regular gun, my machine gun. And then uh, I will shoot the Medusa heads themselves with the uh, my missiles. So there we go. You have to watch out for these jets as well. The jets drop these uh, these bombs, and uh, sometimes those can catch you off guard. And I got really lucky with that. The hitboxes can actually be kind of nice in this game, nice to you, I should say, um, because I got touched by that bullet, but my hitbox, I guess, is only so big in certain instances. And, uh, it didn't, uh, cause a collision, which is nice. Go ahead and destroy that tank. What I like to do with the, the Medusa heads is target one at a time. Kind of like that. And there we go. So the idea is to just take out one, then another, and then another, and then another, and that makes life a lot easier. If you're spreading your shots between all of them, you're going to have four missiles on your butt, and it's a lot harder to destroy all four missiles uh, that are homing at you. So one mechanic that's actually kind of interesting in this game is that uh, your grenade that you have can actually go over walls, 
And you'll notice that your your missile cannot. So you notice my missile is blowing up the second it hits a wall. Um, that is actually one benefit to having the grenade when you die. Uh, now we haven't died yet. Now we probably will die at least once or twice in this playthrough. So you'll get to see the grenade uh, in action. But uh, the splash damage is very important to take advantage of when you're playing this game. Uh, when you've got your upgraded missiles and whatnot. So you can actually use the splash damage to kill enemies. You don't have to actually hit them directly with the missile. Whereas with your stock grenade, when you start the game or when you die, uh, you'll have to actually hit the enemies head on. But uh, again, one of the benefits to the grenade is that it, it actually goes over walls and whatnot, whereas the missiles do not. Now, not going over walls with the missiles isn't really a big deal right now. Um, because it, you know, it spreads out in a uh, four-way fire shot and it'll just cut through everything, which is very, very nice. And one reason you want to get powered up as quickly as possible. But if you do die, just remember that you can still snipe enemies from a distance in safety. Um, kind of like this. This guy would be over there, I'd be able to shoot a grenade over that, and it would still make contact with him, and he would die. And it would be good. Uh, so, yeah, something to keep in mind when you're playing this game. And, uh... Tanks you can destroy with just your machine gun. A lot of things in this game can actually be destroyed with your machine gun. Um, and sometimes I find that's just the safer way to deal with things. Shooting with your missiles requires you to be a little more accurate. You know, your missiles uh, shoot in a uh, eight-way fashion. And uh, so basically you can aim in, you know, eight different directions. So diagonally, uh, straight up or straight down, left or right, things like that. But your, your machine gun shot, you can sort of taper to the left and right like this, and so you can get some more fine-tuned aiming, which is, uh, which is pretty nice. So these blinking stars over there, if you're, uh, if you're not powered up, they'll actually give you uh, your full missile power-up. So we really have no need for it right now, but we'll go ahead and pick it up anyway. It doesn't really give us any points or anything like that, but it's very handy uh, to know where those stars are. They're hidden, typically. And uh, you can you can shoot with your grenades or your missiles to uh, to make them appear. So none of these lasers here are kind of a pain to deal with. This first one in particular. So you want to just move. You want to be right next to it and then move the second that uh, a gap is open. And uh, this one right here is actually pretty easy. They get slower and slower uh, the farther you go. But that first laser, I've died on that first laser so many times uh, over the years. But uh, this top row of lasers really isn't that bad to deal with. It's that bottom row of lasers, that first one in particular, that's uh, that's challenging to get through. So I believe this is where we drop off. Yeah, this is where we drop off our guys again. So let's go ahead and drop off some guys. And you can see you get about 500 points per. That's That's a lot of points in this game. And when we're dropping off like 15 of them, that's 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 a lot of points. So later on in the game, what's going to start happening is, uh, you know, jets are going to be flying down as we're dropping off POWs. Uh, helicopters are going to fly down. Uh, the helicopters are probably actually a little more threatening than the jets are. Um, the jets are a little bit bigger. Uh, the helicopters actually will shoot bullets aimed at you, whereas the jets will just shoot uh, sort of bombs onto the ground uh, in pretty much the same uh, the same spot every time. So you don't it's a little bit easier to avoid, and you have to watch out for these turrets that pop up out of the ground. There might be a few more tanks right here, and then this is going to be our boss fight. It's basically a battleship with more turrets lodged in it. So if you ever see tanks coming up from the bottom of the screen as well, it's very wise to try to take them out first. And uh, it looks like my splash damage, unfortunately, does not do damage to this boss. Uh, only the missile itself would do damage. So we want to get a little bit closer up so the missile actually connects with the turret. Alright, so that's three levels down and three more levels to go. So we're already halfway through the game and only 15 minutes into this playthrough. Actually feels like it's a... Uh, feels like it's a little bit less than that. I'm surprised we've actually been playing for 15 minutes. That's actually pretty interesting. We're not really playing, but this video's been going on for 15 minutes. I feel like it, it's only eight minutes long at this point. 
but uh, I guess this, this game is a little bit longer than I uh, originally gave it credit at the beginning of the video. I said, hey, it'll only take us 20 minutes. Uh, really, you can run through the game in 20 minutes if you don't spend time picking up all the POWs and you know exactly what to do. You have to watch out for some of these boulders here, and then you've got these mines as well. Uh, the mines are actually invisible until you get close to them, and then they, uh, they show themselves. So let's go ahead and blow some of these up, grab some POWs. Always shoot the tanks when they're behind you, because the tanks can be very threatening, so you have to watch out for them. So one uh, interesting tactic here as well, is you'll notice that you can actually see turrets before they actually uh, appear on the screen. You'll see the base of the turret before the actual turret head itself uh, shows up and starts shooting at you. So, if you're having trouble with this game, one thing you can do is just sort of inch the screen up, bit by bit. I, mean, I don't recommend playing like that, but if you really have trouble, like, I can see there's a turret in the top right here. Kind of like this, and I just inch over, and see the turret isn't active, where it was, it's active now, but if I push the screen down a little bit, now it's not active anymore. And so I can try to come up here quickly, kill it, and then uh, move on. There's also a missile turret up there which I wanted to get uh, rid of. Not necessarily because I needed to, because I really had it pushed off the screen, but uh, just for some extra points. There's also going to be uh, a train that comes up here from the bottom, and if we have the four-way missile, we can pretty much kill it in one hit. Just like that. It's a really cool effect. If you have just the grenade itself, uh, that doesn't really work, and I believe you have to destroy each... Uh, uh, each section of the train on its own, one by one, with, you know, one grenade at a time. And there we go, we can drop off some more POWs for some points. Again, 500 points apiece. And you can see why grabbing the POWs is important for survival if you're having trouble with this game, because we've got eight lives right now, and we're gonna get more lives, uh, I believe, as we progress here. Assuming we don't die, we will, we should definitely get some more lives. Let's go ahead and take out that turret, just like that. And this is our next boss. This is going to be a uh, helicopter that flies down from the top of the screen. Um, <coughs> it shoots some bullets and whatnot. Not really too tough to deal with. It doesn't seem like your uh, machine gun really does a whole lot to this boss. Um, so you'll know when your machine gun is actually doing damage uh, when it makes a sound cue. It makes a little tink, tink, tink kind of sound cue. Like you're, you're, you're shooting metal or something like that. Uh, when you hear that sound, you know you're doing damage with your machine gun. So, you can actually do machine gun damage to the final boss. You can do damage to the, uh, the first boss, the, uh, the multiple tanks. Um, you can do machine gun damage to the, uh, battleship boss's turrets as well. So, as long as you hear the, uh, the, the you know, the, the sort of metallic, uh, reflection sound, uh, then you know you're doing damage. Let's go ahead and kill this turret right here, just because it's kind of a pain. Let's go ahead and pick up these guys too, just like so. And we'll pick up these guys too. So this level can be a little tricky, uh, especially if you die, but uh, it's actually not too bad if, uh, if you don't die. So, there we go. I need to get in there quickly. To, uh, to hit that, otherwise that, that would have been really tough to actually deal with, come to think of it. And there's probably going to be a few more tanks up here. Uh, this level starts introducing really big tanks. And there's that jet. I always like to try to take the jets out when I can, just like so. And there's uh, another turret up here. And I think I might be able to hit it like this. There we go, just like that. That's why the spread is so good. And there's a star right there, but I don't think it's really useful, but we'll go ahead and try to pick it up anyway. There we go. Go ahead and kill those guys. Just, uh, drive uh, to the side of these mines. And again, it's all about using that splash damage from our missiles to kill things like turrets that are behind barricades and barriers and whatnot. So getting your missiles powered up in this game is very important for survival purposes. Makes life a whole lot easier. So, again, if you're one of those people that, for some reason, has trouble with this game, get powered up. Uh, and use that splash damage. You don't have to rush into every situation that you encounter in this game. Uh, it's really not necessary. It's not necessary at all. 
So, like, we can actually bust open this- this house. Right here, just by using splash damage. Same with this one. Just like that. And you can do the same with, you know, enemy tanks and turrets and things like that. Like, there's a turret right here. Bam, just like that. I used the, uh, the splash damage fire to, uh, destroy that turret. Without even coming near the turret, the turret couldn't do anything to me. It was- I was- I was too far away for, uh, it to be able to do anything to me. So, you know, using that, this splash damage to your, your advantage is, uh, very useful. It makes life so much easier. You know what I'm beginning to think? I think eight lives might actually be the maximum. And, uh... Yeah, I'm thinking eight lives might be the maximum. And if you have eight lives already, then, uh, you actually don't earn any other extra lives. We'll see. Dropping off more guys, and there's the Jets. The Jets have a tendency of coming down on this stage as uh, you're dropping off your POWs. So we need to watch out for that. That's priority number one, is not getting sniped by those Jets when we're dropping off our POWs. And there's another one, just like so, and then move out of the way if you see them dropping the, dropping bombs. And that's it. Let's go ahead and take out these, uh, these tanks, these turrets. Just like so, and then this turret, and then that turret. Blow open that. No hidden stars. And uh, this should take us to the boss fight. This is, yeah, this is actually a pretty easy boss fight for the most part. Uh, you just need to destroy uh, these containers. And to do that, you need to shoot the blinking lights at the edge of the container. Now, the window to do so is actually quite small, so you need to just wait for the door to open and then shoot immediately, just like so. And I'd like to take out all the turrets. I don't know if taking out all the turrets is actually necessary. You might just have to take out the, uh, the doors. And then shoot the, uh, the door here, and then that's it. Yeah, I haven't gotten another extra life, and I feel like we probably should have. So, uh, it's entirely possible that eight lives is your maximum. You might not be able to go over eight lives. Which is kind of interesting. I always thought you could probably go over eight lives, but I always die at least once, or twice, or three times <laughs> when I when I play through this game. Um, so, I've usually got, you know, I'm hovering around five, six, or seven lives, and so I always earn another one up to eight. So this is the last level in the game, and this level actually has some legitimately difficult parts. And so if you do have trouble with Jackal, chances are this is where you're going to experience a lot of that trouble. Uh, a lot of enemies just sort of appear out of nowhere as you're pushing the screen up. So it's actually good sometimes to just push the screen relatively slowly. By pushing it quickly, uh, you'll make more enemies appear uh, faster, which makes, which makes life a little more difficult unnecessarily difficult sometimes. So like right here, I'm just gonna take my time, push the screen up a little bit, and then a little bit. And if I wanted to, I can come back down here. There are a, a couple more barracks where we can get some more POWs, just like so. So if we're playing for points, it's good to uh, come over here and try to get these guys. And take advantage of that uh, four-way splash damage. Just like so. Most of the uh, buildings in this game, or in, not in this game, but on this level, uh, feature uh, turrets. So you have to watch out for the turrets. And there are going to be some more guys over here this way. Now just play it relatively safe here. There are the helicopters. The helicopters are probably the worst guys to deal with on this level. Because they actually shoot directly at you. Just like that, see? They're very difficult to avoid. And it actually, it's actually interesting. I uh, somehow upgraded my missile. I don't think it 
dropped a blinking guy. So that was interesting. So I've got a missile, I don't have a grenade. Uh, which actually will make life a little more difficult here, because I'd like to, say, shoot a grenade over that wall to destroy that tank, but I can't. Because my missiles don't go over walls. They, uh... They only go through walls when they're upgraded, and it's not upgraded right now. But at least I can still hit turrets with them, so that's good. And there we go. Take our time here. Wait for this tank to come by the door. Now there's gonna be another turret underground here that usually gives me trouble right here. I've died to that turret so many times because I don't pay attention to it. I just I'm just not focused on it because I forget it's there. And it does a pretty dense fire pattern spread shot. Yep, another extra life. Let's see if we can destroy this turret right here. Oh, we got the, the four-way spread, so that's going to help us out a lot. There's actually a hidden star right here that you can usually get on the first time you go through this level. I think if you get it and then you die, it doesn't reappear. Or, it's something weird. I've had it not appear before. Uh, but in most playthroughs I've done, that star has appeared. Which will give you, uh, you know, fully maximum firepower. So when we get to the boss here, the uh, the final boss, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to show you a relatively cheap strategy that I learned recently, which will allow us to uh, defeat the boss a little more consistently. There we go, and there's going to be another turret over here, another missile turret that I want to take out. Just like that, first try. I don't even have to really think about it. There we go. Those missiles are actually really tough to deal with because they're fast, and they're big. Fast and big is usually a recipe for disaster in games like these. So this is probably the toughest part in the game right here, but since we've got our four-way spread shot with our missiles, it's actually not too bad to do. We can just use the spread to kill these turrets from a distance. Now, I've been told that it's entirely possible to run through this uh, escalator part uh, without stopping, and you will avoid all the bullets at the same time. I have never successfully done that, if you've done it, let me know in the chat, and uh, let me know if I should try it again, just to see how it works. Alright, so this is our final boss. Uh, so he's got two forms. So what I want to do is try to take out these tanks. He's got multiple uh, turrets up top. And my focus is really the tanks, when I, when I can. And then we just, uh, we shoot this building here. And then by shooting this building, it's going to blow up, and then it's going to reveal uh, another tank on the inside of it. A huge tank, which is going to be the, the last boss of the game. And so, the one thing we can do here is just run all the way over to the right, and hope we don't get blasted by his laser. You can actually sit here in the corner, and his machine gun won't be able to hit you, and his laser won't hit you either. So we can just sit here like this in safety. And so, what I like to do is just run up slowly like this. And just rinse and repeat. So we're going to take it relatively slow here. So if you're having troubles with Jackal, this is a, a great strategy in order to be able to beat the game with relative ease. Now, if you're up close, your machine gun actually does do damage to this guy. You'll actually hear the little tinking sound, and uh, it will do damage. Oh, and we died. So like that, you can actually hear it. Just like so. Let's come back down here like so. Yeah, this guy, if you try to get close to him, he's very inconsistent to fight. Very, very inconsistent. I have died so many times at this boss. Um, his, uh, his laser shot, his flame laser shot, seems to be 
very, very inconsistent on when it fires, how quickly it fires, how rapidly it fires back to back. And he's getting close to death. And that actually almost killed us. All right, let's come down here in safety. Just take our time, just like so. Ooh. See, whether he moves left or right is just completely random, it seems. There's so much RNG to this fight that it's very difficult to control. Very difficult to control the fight. Uh, but that's it. We beat Jackal. We died a few times. I think I still ended with like six or seven lives. Um... Not as good as I would have liked, you know, I, actually when we got partway through the playthrough, I was thinking to myself, like, man, I might actually one life clear this game. Um, but I should have known better. It's Jackal. I always die at least a couple times on this game. Um, but as you can see, if you, if you know some of the tactics in this game, you can actually get through it relatively unscathed for most of the playthrough. Uh, when you take advantage of some of the uh, mechanics that this game offers. So, knowing when to use your machine gun instead of use, using your missiles, uh, using your four-way splash damage on your missiles to have fire go through walls and kill enemies from a distance instead of being right up in the enemy's faces and whatnot. Uh, all that stuff goes a long way uh, when you're playing this game. So, you know, Jackal, to me, is not a very difficult game for about 90% of it, but it's that last level that uh, gets quite challenging at certain parts if you're not careful. Uh, if you are careful, it's actually still not too bad. It's mainly the final boss that's probably the toughest part of the game because of all the randomness to that fight. Uh, most parts of this game don't really have a lot of randomness. Uh, you can usually predict when the helicopters are going to come down, when the jets are going to come down and things like that. They usually come down at scripted moments. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's the same moments basically every time you play the game. Um, so yeah, you can kind of predict those. But that final boss, uh, it's kind of tough to work with. Uh, if I try to get up close to that final boss, his laser usually wrecks me. So using that safe strategy where you just sit down on the bottom right hand corner of the screen, or the bottom left hand corner, they're both safe zones. Um, you can, uh, you can just take your time on that boss. Something to keep in mind in this game is that there is no timer. You can just sit as long as you want on the screen and nothing will come out and kill you unless you've got enemies on the screen and uh, and so you know you can really really take your time on that final boss so but yeah that is Jackal on the NES guys we hit start here we actually, we'll actually actually go straight into loop number two and we'll carry over our score and our lives and things like that um, but again we're not gonna we're not gonna play loop two but uh, it is a thing here if you're cur curious about it. So, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this playthrough. Jackal is an awesome game. I highly recommend checking this out if you've never played it before. And if you have played it, uh, maybe try it again if it's been a while since you last played it. It's not uh, like the most complex game out there, but it's just uh, it plays well. It sounds good. It, it looks decent, and it's just uh, it's an all-time classic when it comes to NES games. I highly recommend revisiting it if uh, you haven't played it in a long time. So with that, guys, if you have any questions or comments, as usual, post them down in the description box below. Uh, if you're new to my channel, consider subscribing. I've got hundreds of Let's Plays on this channel, and uh, as always, many, many more to come. I try to upload every other week, every other Sunday, if you're new to my channel. Also, again, I do live streams every Thursday and sometimes Saturdays, so if you're around, feel free to pop in and say hello on those. And, uh, yeah, for everyone else already subbed, thanks for your usual support. Feel free to give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you hate everything about life. And, uh, until the next one, guys, take it easy.